Hey listeners, welcome to another season of Cozy Moon Podcast. We have made it to season eight. This season, I want to shine the light on mama's health, aka women's health, and some of these illnesses that I will be discussing with special guests can also affect men, but I really want to focus on what illnesses uh, women go through and deal with and have to make sure their bodies are in check, have to make sure their diet is in check, especially if they want to carry children or carrying children. And, you know, the knowledge of knowing your family history, how important it is for your health and your life. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this season. I hope you guys enjoy all of the guests. We're going worldwide with these guests. I'm talking to women across the water, across the pond, as they call it. I'm talking to women from different walks of life. And I just want you guys to get the information, learn from the information and take that with you and spread it to someone who, you know, needed more insight on what they're going through or what their symptoms are. I hope you guys enjoy Cozy Womb Podcast. Don't forget to hashtag Cozy Womb Podcast. You can find me on Twitter, IG, and Facebook. The guest that I have for you guys today is my mom, so please excuse the um, sound, but uh, she did the best she can for a 66-year-old lady. (laughs) Enjoy. Hey, Cozy Womb fam. This is JC, the dopest mommy around and owner of He Hates My Tees, a novelty t-shirt company based out of Arlington, Texas. This is our first year grinding it out, and baby, it's been a beautiful journey. I'm a mommy of two spicy kids, Davy and Jameson, and an educator. And I started my company as a way to be self-sufficient and control my own narrative on my value after working several years in a corporate environment being, you know, undervalued. My latest collection is called The Dopest Around, saluting all dope-ass folks. We just released The Dopest Mommy Around Dad Hats, and they are fire. You hear me? Fire. It's available in several colors. Follow us on IG at He Hates My Tees. And visit our website, hehatesmytees.com. And that's tees, T-E-E-S. Use code COZY15 for 15% off your purchase. Love ya, be dope, stay dope, and I'll see you around. This is episode of season eight of Cozy Womb Podcast. My name is Shan, and I have a special, special guest. She's very short, and uh, I, I feel like she can fit in my pocket. Um, I have my mom because my mom is actually perfect for this season because she deals with a lot of illness. Illnesses. Is illness the word? Illnesses. <laughs> well, she has a lot of different illness um, that affects how her day to day is um, since she was very young. And I feel like, you know, when I always went to the doctor's offices and they asked me about my family health history, I'm just like, oh my God, just mark all of it, yes, because. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, my, what happened my mom had and um, I always remember like my friends being like that's not funny it's, it's serious I'm just like but the way that I got through growing up with you is being able to laugh at the fact that people I laugh about yeah people feel like your illness is like like you're over with and I've just seen you deal with it every day and still live your life. Um, And, and, you know, I always tell people if you, if if they meet you, they would never think that you deal with X, Y, and Z illness, um, which is a good thing. So this episode, I wanted to focus on diabetes. I don't have diabetes, but I think that's a grace for God because the way that I eat candy, ice cream, sugar, um, I hope you never get it. I hope I don't get it, but it's kind of like 
I, I've only stopped eating anything with sugar for three months. And it wasn't hard, it's just a real, um, it's like a real mental training of you not indulging in sugar. And it's to the point where I don't even need it. I just like the fact that I can have it. And and sometimes I just eat it out of the fact that it's around and I don't have anything else to do, um, which is not a good thing. But <laughs> I feel like it's, be- it's better than cigarettes. It's better than um, me wanting to pop pills or being addicted to painkillers. And I'm happy that I don't have a addictive per- a personality where I feel like I need something and I you know my whole personality changes if I can't do it I think the only thing that I'm like that with is um creating if if I can't create I get very annoyed I feel I feel like I can't breathe if I can't do something with change I feel like I can't breathe but other than that I would say between you and my dad, I feel like I'm very healthy to the point where I don't I don't deal with a lot of the things that you guys have, except for the arthritis. I don't I don't deal with a lot of the stuff that you have. But we're we're focusing on diabetes because um, when I looked up illnesses that women deal with the most, this was on the list. And so because you um, live with diabetes and you take medicine for it and you change your diet for it, I just wanted um, them to, you know, hear what that's like. It's my mom. That's my introduction for you. (laughs) Okay. And you want me to talk now? Yeah. Well, the thing, I've been ill since I was a little girl growing up. And um, I've always eat well. I'm a vegetable and fruit kind of eater. I don't eat a lot of junk food. Wait, um, but wait, I, wait. Hold the phone still because it keeps, it keeps, when you move it, it sounds like you're underwater. Okay, try it now. <laughs> okay. I eat, I always eat well. Because mm-hmm. when I first um, learned that I had diabetes and the doctor had me write down everything I ate for the whole month and when I go back to him, he said, but you don't eat anything. Mm-hmm. You, you eat well, you don't eat anything that causes this. I said, no, I don't, but it's in my gene pool, so that's why I have it. So um, he tried medication with me, met, met for me. And uh, the very first time I started taking metformin, I think I took it for three days and I started having really bad chest pains. Mm. And I quit taking it. You didn't tell Uh, him that you stopped? Yes, I quit for two days and I didn't have the chest pain. And I called him and tell him I cannot take it because he asked me why. I said, because he gave me chest pain and he said, how do you know that's what causing your chest pain? I said, because I wasn't having chest pains before I started on the meds. And when I stop it for two days, I didn't have any chest pain. And when I take it again, I start having chest pains. Mm. So I said, okay, you know your body. You must know what's working for it. So when I went back to see him, um, he put me, he kept me on insulin. Mm-hmm. And I was on insulin twice a day until they change the insulin around. But since then, I've been only on insulin. And I got my A1C down mm-hmm. um, from, it was 10 points. And I got it down back to 6.5 on my own with diet. And um, What did you change in your diet to help it? I, I just quit eating any rice, no, only thing I ate was just greens. The only carb I had was sweet potato. No white potato, no bread, no sugar, no flour, no rice. Vegetable, fruit, any kind of vegetable, all vegetable. That's my diet. 
vegetable fruits no sugar no uh, zero sugar um so that's what that's how i control it but lately i've been having a struggle controlling my blood sugar because um my pancreas is not producing insulin so you have so five. every once in a while um you have type 1 diabetes. Type 2. How you have type, type two, 2? Because when I looked I it up, it, it says type 1 diabetes when your pancreas produces little or no insulin. Right. But I have I have type 2. That's crazy. But my pancreas is not producing enough insulin to manage my system. So I, that's why I have to do insulin. But I don't have to do the insulin every day because I monitor my blood sugar. Um, twice a day I take it in the morning, first thing before a cup of tea, before anything. I do my blood pressure and my blood sugar. And um, most of the time it's okay. Um, if it's high, then I do some insulin in the morning if it's high because sometimes I go to bed with a low blood sugar, like a normal blood sugar, like 150 is normal. One, 150 to 175 is normal in the evening after me. Like last night I went to bed and my blood, my blood sugar when I take it, it was 155. And it was fine, I didn't need insulin. But this morning when I woke, woke up, it was 290. Mm. What's the highest? So overnight. What's the highest it's ever been? Oh, I've been where I was blind in 2011. Mm-hmm. 2011, I was blind for a month because of my diabetes. My blood sugar was up in the 600, and I didn't know. How did so, you do? Well, 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 what I read, it says sometimes people don't have like they don't feel the symptoms or they don't feel any different well um all i know was that i was thirsty that was when they put me on insulin for the first time mm-hmm. i was just thirsty but the fact that i suffered from vision loss you know from you were little mm-hmm. since i had a stroke in 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 um 89 i have had a vision loss on and off that's why I don't drive. So I thought that was what was bothering me. I never ever think it was diabetes because before that, um, I was always have a, I always had a low blood sugar, not high blood sugar. Mm-hmm. So um, when I couldn't see for the whole month, I couldn't see, and um, it started that I started feeling weak and I'm thirsty and I'm peeing a lot. And when I went to the doctor. They found out my blood sugar was uh, 680, and the doctor was shocked. They gave me insulin right away. He said, I could have gone into a coma. Mm-hmm. I could have had a stroke because of it, but I didn't know that was the problem. So, yes. Yeah. So since then, I got myself all the insulin by using cinnamon. I, I remember when grandmother was, uh, when I was younger, my grandmother always said cinnamon is good for blood sugar. So I remember that and I start um, boiling the cinnamon sticks and drink it. So I would boil the cinnamon stick and keep it on the stove and drink it twice a day. Um, and that with the cinnamon stick, I drink the cinnamon water and my diet. I got myself off the insulin and got my A1C back down to. 6.5 and but later A1C? A1C is your total blood sugar for the month for the your blood your blood okay. sugar for the month or your body produce. So um a norm is five is it's anything below six that's a normal um A1C anything below six but six point five that is considered a normal blood sugar. But anything above, but right now I'm in the seven. My blood sugar is 7.5 right now. I want to get it back down to six, but it's been difficult. Um, even with my diet, it's been very difficult to get it back down there, but I'm trying. So when when did you develop 
diabetes or when did you find out you had diabetes? 2008. Mm. And at that time when I found out I, I had, it was a routine blood check, doctor visit, a routine blood check and the doctor said I have diabetes and I was shocked because I never have any symptoms. And, but at that time, my blood sugar was um, 400. It wasn't really high. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started the change in the diet. Um, and I had it controlled, but every once in a while, it get out of control for some reason. And um, then in 2011, when I went blind for the month, that's when it was really high. And that's... Um, that's when they start me on insulin. So now I, I do take insulin. Sometimes I could only do like maybe three days out of the week. Mm. Once a day, three days out of the week, depends on my levels. Mm. And I only do the insulin if, if my nighttime insulin is um, close to 200, mm. I will do some insulin. If it's not, if it's okay, under mama. 200, I usually. Well, I don't have to do insulin. What are you like your do's and don't on like what you can do on oh, okay. um, what you can do or what you can uh, eat um, or you can't eat? I cannot eat anything, any carb, carbs, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. no rice, no sugar, no flour, um, no white bread, and <clears throat> I don't do any of that. If I, if I touch rice, sometimes I can eat bread, mm -hmm. like the Jamaican auto bread. Mm -hmm. If I eat a slice of that, it doesn't do anything to my blood sugar. But if I eat a slice of any other bread. Is it the it's enriched sugar. sugars that they use in the bread? I don't know what they put in the, um, in the um, auto bread, but that don't seem to push on my blood sugar at all when I do eat. I don't eat it often, but when I was down in West Palm and I could get it, mm -hmm. I eat it from one bakery, and there um, I eat like a slice a day, mm -hmm. and it, it, I tried it, and it never put on my blood sugar. But any other carbohydrate I eat, if I eat a spoonful of rice, it push up my blood sugar. Even if it's brown rice? Even if it's brown rice. The other day I had taco, it was taco and I hear and I say, oh. Let me see, I fell for a taco and I ate a taco. And that night I did the incident. My blood sugar put, went straight up to 200. Well, I could have told you that with all them seasonings on that. I could have told you that. Uh, what's what's one thing that you used to eat that you can't eat anymore that you miss? That I miss? Mm -hmm. um, I don't really miss anything. That I used to eat that I miss. Mm -hmm. um, Reason candy. <laughs> you don't eat it anymore. No, I, I look at I look at it in the store and I cut my hand back. <laughs> I bought some last week. I was like, this is grandma's favorite candy. <laughs> mm. A reason I came back. I still eat my dark chocolate dog. I, I only do dark chocolate. I use a, I eat a square every other day. Okay. A square okay, pause. Candy. Let me tell you about how my mother eats candy. My mom could get a regular sized bag of Skittles and have it for six months. I can get a regular sized <laughs> bag of Skittles and from the store to my house is done with. I hate how she eats candy, but I guess, in a sense, it works for her because she has all of this going on with her body, so she doesn't flood her body with sugar, but I hate how my mom eats candy. I'll and eat one, one. I'll eat one of the Skittles for that. <laughs> Hence why my candy... I don't buy it anymore. <laughs> my candy um, craze is so, like, on high because it was just always around, and I just knew my mom had it because she she wasn't eating it. And if she was eating it, she wasn't eating it at a rate that I cared. So, oh my God. Um, yeah. 
What's the worst part of uh, you being a diabetic? Oh, the worst part of it is sticking myself. I hate to stick myself. And I have to do my blood, I have to check my blood twice a day. That's the part I hate the most. So and then when I have to give myself insulin. So the needle is the insulin, the sticking yourself to check your blood. Yeah, the, the, the little pen, you have to stick your finger to check the blood. That's it, yeah. To monitor. Yeah, that's what I hate the most. And then with the injections and with the insulin, anywhere I stick myself out, these little black, black spots on my stomach, I hate it. I never have any spots on my, my body before. And because I have to give myself insulin, I have these little spots on my belly where I have to stick myself. And that's not good for your belly shirt. Huh? <laughs> I said that's not good for your belly shirt. Um, I like my belly shirt. <laughs> oh man. Um, what would be some advice you would give a woman uh, who just found out she's a diabetic or um, is dealing with being a diabetic? Like, what's some advice? It's 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 really hard. You have to just. You you have to just make up your mind. You're gonna you know you have to do something. You have to deal with because what I do in the morning, I'm an early riser and I get up. If I wake up and test my blood sugar and it's high, I go outside and I work it out. Instead of going and and, and hit myself some insulin, I go out and I do some yard work. I do some gardening. I. I so, go dig the soil. So exercise help lowers it, lower it. For me, yeah. Every different things work for different people. Exercise is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You can burn that blood sugar. You can burn it off. That blood sugar for me. I go outside and I'll go outside and do some yard work. Um, cut some vines. You know, trim some trees. Do something physical outside. And. Um, and that helps. That helps to bring it down. Um, when I was in Portland, it was because the area, I used to walk three miles a day because it was a very safe area to go walking. Mm -hmm. And I would walk three miles a day. And that was good. Um, but I can't do much of the sun because I get burned really easy in the sun. I have to go walking very early in the morning or after dark when the sun is gone down. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, walking helps. Exercise do help. Um, while I'm here at Nathan's, I jump on the trampoline with the kids. I jump, mm -hmm. I go on the trampoline and I'll jump. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like jumping on the trampoline. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah, so that's yeah. Exercise works. Exercise is helpful, mm -hmm. um, and it's good to keep fit and laugh about it. Don't worry about it. You you worry about it, and you're gonna be in big trouble. It's gonna take your take your mind over. And, you know, I even when I'm hurt and I I try to get up and I can't get up and I fall or stumble because of joint pain, mm -hmm. I just crack up. I I laugh at myself. It, ha it keeps <laughs> laughing up. I get through my illnesses by laughing. You know, I don't make it, I don't make it bring me down. And nobody, everybody look at me and say, oh, you're not sick. What do you do with all that medicine? I said, little did you know, do you know, I am, you know, I need that medicine. Without them, I'll be dead. But I don't, I don't worry about it. I just take life a day at a time and move on. Roll with the punches, I say. So, so are you leaning more towards finding a natural way of of dealing with the, uh, your diabetes or taking your doctor's medicine? I wish I didn't have to do the insulin. I wish there was another way. I try to constantly use the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. um, I use cinnamon all the time. Yeah, but I I prefer not to do the insulin or take medication. Mm -hmm. I wish it was a natural way for me to get over everything that's going on. But, Is there um, another herb that helps um, 
di- diabetic issues. I know some of please, um, Cinnamon. I know Cinnamon. Uh, I, I don't know if any other herbs. I heard, um, um, I'll try anything. I drink a lot of different herbs. I drink Sarsi. I drink Cinnamon. I, um, you know, I'm not a Nasty, of, nasty uh, oregano. <laughs> yeah, I, I boil oregano and drink that. Well, oregano is good for when you have a cold. You boil it when you drink it. And that not all the cold. Um, yeah, I, I'm not afraid of herbal medicine. And that set of herb that you have got me, mm-hmm. and that's done, I use that and I don't see it make a difference at all. Yeah, my friend said the same thing. She said it did give her a lot of energy, but than that, uh, um, he didn't notice that anything. He did. It kind of made a difference in any, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. did, uh, yeah. reach out to me to check in to see how everything was, but, yeah. All right, so we have, there's, um, two type of diabetes. Type 2 affects how your body processes blood sugar. And then type 1 is supposed to be yeah. when, um, your pancreas, produces little or no insulin. Doesn't work, don't function. Because uh, sometimes type one, you get it as a child. Or uh, you can born with the type one diabetes. That's what I was just about to ask you. Like, is it something genetic or something you just develop over time? Um, Type two, you develop that over time. Type one is something you're born with, where you, your pancreas don't function. So you have to have that insulin. Type one, you develop that over time, and it's also you in, you can inherit it too. It's in your gene pool, and you will get it. But if you're careful with your diet, if you know it's in your gene pool, and you're careful with your diet mm-hmm. and exercise, and, and you know stuff like that, you can avoid getting type two diabetes. Mm. Most um, of the time, most people can avoid it. How do they find out if babies have that? Or is that something you find out once they're like eating solid food? No, um, sometimes they can find out when um, when the baby is born and you know, they do general testing when a baby is first born. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it shows up then and sometimes they don't find out until later on. But most of the time they will find out um, under age two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of the time by age two, a doctor will find out a child is diabetic. Okay. Well, that was some good information on diabetes. And um, I hate that you have to stick yourself. Um, that's just something like I don't even watch people do that in movies. Some people on IG will post. Um, like they have, they're so advanced with the machines now. Um, What's his name? Damon Dash. Um, they have one that you, you, it's a, you just you just click, put your phone there, and it will tell you. Yeah, you know, it's an app. Like it's an app. Yeah. And he said yeah. he, he had it on him, and he said sometimes when he checks it, it doesn't connect properly to give him his um, proper numbers. But he's been doing a lot of like right. um, vegan eating and uh clean eating and he doesn't uh-huh. he doesn't eat anything that's not um vegan or anything like that um i preferably like vegan like cookies and 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 baked goods and stuff there's this store here in uh-huh. called sprouts and they have a good bakery section where they have like a lot of organic um and, and vegan uh baked goods and muffins and stuff so I usually um buy the stuff there but you would like that store they have a lot like like all their nuts and um dried fruit is like separate in separate bins and stuff so it's pretty good but yeah and that's the other thing I keep with me all the time nuts I eat a lot of nuts um walnut almond any kind of nut I, I, I eat a lot of nuts so that's where I get my protein in. I don't eat a lot of meat. Um, chicken, fish, um, 
but um, most of the time, it's just vegetable and nuts I eat most of the time. Mm. My mom, um, my mom probably eat. And I do Greek yogurt. My mom probably eat two meals a day. And anything over that, she feels like you're force feeding her. Yeah, I, I, I do not. <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. You're supposed to I, eat breakfast. It's hard for me to eat breakfast in the morning. If I eat breakfast, I feel nauseous. Mm. I I can't eat early. I drink a cup of coffee, take my meds, my morning meds at about maybe 11 o'clock. Mm. I'd have some yogurt or yogurt with um, oatmeal that you sent me, by the way, I'm on the last part. Do you like it? Yes. Um, I have that with yogurt, no sugar, no nothing, just that in some Greek yogurt, mm-hmm. and um, that's what I have about eleven o'clock, and then I have dinner on both sides. Yeah, in between that I have nuts. The thing, the thing about you know people with that are diabetic that might not know or you know find out later on. I feel like a lot of these food companies should be sued because a lot of the ingredients they have in these foods are the same ingredients that they use on car tires or or paint thinners. <laughs> and a lot of the ingredients that are in like the kids' cereals and oats aren't supposed to be in there or, or is unnecessary to be in there. And they, they can't even explain to you why they put it in. And so that's why I really go out my way now to like look at the ingredients that's in stuff and i might buy um the steel oats i think it's called red red mill oats where it's actually not a lot of chemical in the um oats and it's not quaker and it's just you know i think they use all of these big words to basically block you from connecting the fact that this is in actual cleaners you're ingesting it in your body and then it's in pop tarts and then it's in the cereal all the things that kids eat throughout the day and it's kind of like well yeah of course, of course you would end up with these illnesses later and so it, it's very important to monitor monitor that stuff like why do i have to buy butter and on the butter container i have to choose if i want a butter with olive oil in it or i want a butter that's soy free it's almost like they put right. soy, they put soy in everything, and you know your estrogen yeah. level is connected to the soy, and then you might have boys that eat soy, and then they develop more you know female. And have big breasts, yeah. Hey, so I don't know. It's a lot going on with the food um, that I feel like they they change the wording of. That's what why I stick to my green, and that's why I like to plant my garden so I have my fresh greens that grow. Yeah. But even that's kind of scary because now, you know, companies, because they want more money, they're trying to um, GMO, you know, seeds and, um, and, and, and make their own greens. Because if you think about it, broccoli is a man-made vegetable. They took two plants and merged them together to make broccoli. And so everybody wants to brand their own this and their own that, when in all reality, you didn't create it. So it's just, it's just weird. Right. Like the amount of people that buy pre-made salad and you know how sometimes it's separate with the, the toppings on top and then you have the salad on the bottom. Yeah. When I worked at the- cor- I don't want that though. When I worked at the corporate, I buy them, but when I worked at the corporate office, you should see the amount of people that just pour out this, this, the greens and put their toppings on and eat it. Like, how do you know they didn't really wash that or not? And a lot of people, when they go out to eat and they have salad, right. it's because they don't wash the greens. And if you ever bought greens that are still attack, attached to like the roots, the amount of dirt that comes in your sink. Dirt, yeah, you have to leave it off. You have to leave it off and wash it. Yeah, a lot of people don't wash it and they just eat it. So, I don't know. I don't know, it's a mess. 
But that was some good information. By the grace of God. Yes. <laughs> it's only through God's grace why people don't drop dead when they eat certain things. Right. <laughs> you say you say your prayer before you eat for two reasons. So so don't <laughs> so so don't kill you and for people who don't have. Oh, man. All right, so let's um get into this other episode. Bye. Bye.